Is Cedar Point now thinking about removing Top Thrill Dragster after all? And why I think we can expect the world's largest B&M Giga Coaster to open in its place. With the unfortunate accident that happened in 2021, mixed in with all the downtime and operating costs, it's clear that the future of Dragster is definitely in question. Before I share with you my updated predictions on if Cedar Point will actually remove their 420 foot tall roller coaster, I want to share with you on what I think could be replacing Dragster, a ride that would become Cedar Point's most popular attraction ever. If we align the rumors swirling around Knott's Berry Farm and mix those with how Cedar Point announced that Dragster will remain closed for the entire 2022 season, it paints us a very interesting story. For the last 10 years or so, Knott's Berry Farm has been rumored to be building a Giga Coaster, which would easily become the largest roller coaster on the West Coast. And lately, this project has been picking up steam with multiple leaked blueprints that look very legit coming in 2021. My theory is this. We already know that Cedar Fair loves working with B&M. So, what if the Knott's Giga is the first coaster we see in a new multi-coaster contract with BNM. California's Great America was supposed to get the hypercoaster. Then that project shifted to King's Island for Orion. So is CGA still planning for their hyper or has that ship sailed? All of this leads me to this question. Could we see Cedar Point start to remove Top Door Dragster later this year to give them enough time for construction on the tallest, fastest, and longest B&M Giga that would open in 2024? I know there are a handful of you thinking, why another Giga? Well, my answer to that would be, why not? After all, King's Island recently opened Orion, a coaster that only stands 57 feet taller than its neighbor, Diamondback. Two coasters from the same manufacturer that offer very similar layouts. Cedar Fair has done this before, and I am sure that they'll do it again, and here is why. Positive guest experience. You also get three major key factors when you build a B&M Giga. Marketability, reliability, and capacity. Fury 325, Orion, and Leviathan suffer from very little downtime. Park guests visiting those parks know that the Giga Coaster will be in operation 99% of the time. And when you visit Cedar Point, you really never know what you're going to get with Dragster. Now, investment wise, this is a no brainer for Cedar Point because they can build a roller coaster that wouldn't be as intense as Steel Vengeance, but still provide a better overall ride experience than Millennium Force. And that's no hate on Millennium, that's just the truth. On top of that, this coaster would offer a much higher throughput than any other ride at the park. Plus, this would actually give Cedar Point a Giga that offers some legit airtime. Throw in a catchy name like Monstrosity 355 and you have a ride that would offer the world's tallest roller coaster lift hill and America's longest steel roller coaster. Marketability wise, this would also be a no brainer. While this attraction will cost over 30 million, just think about all the buzz that will surround it and the ROI Cedar Point would get in return. Coaster enthusiasts and the general public would come from all over the world to take on the largest roller coaster to ever be built at Cedar Point. And think of it like this, you're trading in a coaster that lasts only 17 seconds for one that offers a ride time of 62 seconds from the drop to the brakes. You also might be thinking that Cedar Point doesn't have room for a 7,230 foot long Giga, but they do. Here's an aerial view of the area and you're probably thinking that Brandon has officially lost his mind, but have I? Because here is how Cedar Point can fit in a 355 foot tall 100 mile an hour Giga coaster that would become one of the best in the world without removing a single existing attraction. 
The station, queue, and maintenance areas would be located where Dragster's on-ride photo and the station currently is. The enormous lift hill would run along the same path as Dragster's brake run. After the 81 degree, 347 foot first drop, the train swoops into a tunnel and then immediately into the first element, a 182 foot tall overbank turnaround. Then the train zooms towards Millennium Island as riders get breathtaking views of the park's original Giga. You will then experience a 70 foot tall high speed bank turn that would actually pass part of the second overbank turn on Millennium Force. This coaster will mix all the other B&M Giga's best elements into creating the strongest Giga coaster layout to date. After the turn over Millennium, riders will experience a 59 foot tall speed hill that travels back over Cedar Point Lake. And in case you're wondering, the sections of track that travel over the water will be elevated high enough so that the boats from the Snake River Expedition can safely travel under it. One of the many custom design elements for this Giga would be the 149 foot tall Trouble Clef variant turnaround, followed by a 201 foot tall airtime hill, after that a 155 foot off axis hill, then a unique 112 foot tall bank turnaround with airtime. Then, as you travel back onto the old Dragster plot of land, you're going to experience a 152 foot tall Camelback airtime hill with a high G turn pullout, followed by two airtime hills, one at 98 feet and the other at 85 to round out this massive new Giga Coaster. The best way to describe this coaster would be Fury on steroids. The Dragster Midway will be completely redesigned and rethemed to fit the coaster in with enough room for a new flat ride in the area if Cedar Point wanted to squeeze one in. You would also see the park pay homage to Dragster and the bleachers with an overlook area located near the coaster's first drop for onlookers to watch the coaster zoom through the layout. As you can see, Cedar Point's newest Giga would really dominate the Cedar Point skyline for decades to come. I spent hours coming up with this design, where Cedar Point could actually have room for a coaster of this size. And luckily for me, I had the help from Escape Designs and with their awesome hard work to really bring my predictions to life. This is what I started with, and this is what we came up with. So, if you want me to create another video like this, where you get to literally experience my predictions, then do not forget to give this video a like. Before I share with you my predictions regarding the fate of Dragster, be sure to become the newest Theme Park Prediction subscriber so you don't miss out on my next video. I don't know about you, but I rank Dragster as the fourth best coaster at Cedar Point. And if you're wondering how I rank the other coasters at the park, then don't miss my Cedar Point roller coaster rank video where you're going to enjoy a few surprises. The link will be in this video's description. Rumors have been swirling around about the future of Dragster for years now. And now, with this unfortunate accident and Cedar Point not planning on operating the coaster this year, could this actually be the end of this iconic coaster? All of this leads me to believe that removing Dragster is an option that Cedar Point is currently considering and here is why. 2023 will be the 20th anniversary of Dragster, and over those 20 years, Cedar Point has seen a ton of issues with this coaster. And if you need proof, then you have to check out El Toro Ryan's awesome problematic coaster video regarding Dragster. This coaster is also very weather dependent, especially the whole wind aspect. Cedar Point spent $25 million for Dragster in 2003, and it's the staple coaster for the park in terms of how it dominates and towers over the rest of the other rides and coasters. But reliability and safety all mean more for any park than having an unreliable staple attraction. Here is another thing to think about. Why would Cedar Point keep Dragster closed for the entire 2022 season, especially when they just removed Wicked Twister and the antique cars over the winter. That's not a good look with all these rides being removed or closed. Besides, wouldn't Cedar Point have already started modifications for the queue line and the ride if they were planning on keeping it? At best, Cedar Point could have pushed for a midsummer reopening for Dragster. Any accident on a ride or roller coaster is very serious, and that, mixed in with all the ride's other issues, I think we all need to start accepting that we may never be riding this coaster again. 
after taking a lot of time thinking about this, I am giving it a 70% chance that Cedar Point will indeed remove Top Throw Dragster after this year. I for one do not want this to happen, but I totally understand why. So do you think a B&M Giga along the size of this creation would be a good move for Cedar Point and a replacement for Dragster? Why or why not? Also, what do you think the park's going to do with Top Door Dragster? Be sure to let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. Remember to smile today, think positive, and keep riding coasters.